But what can people do to hurt a mountain? Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about an indie film called They Look Like People. I saw the picture, I guess the, the uh, cover on Netflix, so it is on American Netflix, in case you're wondering. And the cover was so intriguing to me, it looked like a high budget, or just like a weird indie film, and I am obsessed with weird indie films. Something like Double, if you've ever seen that, that movie is amazing. It's not a horror, so I didn't review it. And this was technically not a horror either, but it's a psychological thriller. But there were genuinely scary moments in this film, so I was like, I don't care, I'm reviewing it. Plus, I want to branch out more, as you guys know, into reviewing more thriller, psychological movies too, because that's like one of my favorite genres. It takes place in New York, and it's basically following these two guys who kind of fell out of their friendship long ago, and one of them is kind of very socially awkward, and he shows up at this guy's house randomly. He claims that he's staying with someone else but it's kind of obvious that he's trying to imply that he needs a place to stay in a way. And the friend is kind of awkward and I just love these kind of indie films where the interactions, there's not a lot of cuts and so it just feels very real. The dialogue could be, could have been improv for all we know. It just felt very realistic and the acting was done beautifully. So spoiler alert, I love this movie. One thing I didn't love about it really I mean, I'm kind of mixed. I have mixed feelings about the ending and I don't know if I like it or not, but I'll get into that when I warn you about spoilers and everything because I do want to talk about the ending, but I'll warn you before, don't worry. What I thought was interesting is Perry Blackshear's the director on this, but he's also the writer the producer and the editor, I believe. So it's very much a low budget kind of indie film where he literally did almost everything for it. And that takes some talent. And let me just say, this was so well executed. It's definitely one of those hidden gems that you see on Netflix. So the main storyline and what makes this scary is the kind of socially awkward guy he gets these phone calls and they're very bizarre and they're telling him that there's a war coming and that they look like people and you don't know if someone's been possessed by them or something and that you cannot look them in the eye. And he's hearing these things and like he's very convinced that there, there's a war that's going to be happening but no one around him believes him. He finally it like opens up to his friend and he's like, look, there's something happening. You need to trust me. You need to be there for me. And at first the friend is like, whoa, dude, calm it down a little bit like whoosh. so immediately in my mind I was like he has schizophrenia or it's gonna turn into this is actually real and everyone else is just not admitting to it or seeing it or anything like you know like in denial and you don't know which way it's gonna go if they're going to go the mental illness route or the actual alien invasion like route and if, you know as a psychology student and I am offended by things easily when it comes to mental illness and I admit that, that I am kind of sensitive to that. Just because I don't want people to exploit it in a way that paints it in a bad light or anything, kind of like they did in The Visit. And this one was quite clear, It they never talked about it except when the friend was like, you should go to this guy, um, I once tried to commit suicide and I went to him and you should go to him, he's cool, basically a psychiatrist. So they kind of touched on that, he could have a mental illness. And I thought it was done well because it, it was very accurate. They aren't particularly like violent, even though there is some violence in this film. But I thought it was an accurate portrayal of schizophrenia. And I thought that was how you do it. If you're gonna go the mental illness route for horror reasons, do it in a way that's accurate and that kind of paints a picture of what it is that they're suffering with. I don't necessarily like it in a horror aspect because it is horrifying, like the symptoms are horrifying for the sufferer and maybe the people around them, but it's not like, I don't know if it should be exploited for entertainment purposes, you know? So I'm on the fence with that. I am on the fence, but overall I thought this movie did a really well job, really well job, really good job with being sensitive around the issue and not exploiting it to the point where like, wow, this guy's crazy. I'm gonna tell you guys that this is a very simple plot. It's very simple movie, very handheld shots. It was just beautiful. And so I highly, highly recommend this film. I definitely give it like a solid nine out of 10. Like it was so entertaining. It really kept you on the edge of your seat because you're like, is this real or is he seeing things and hearing things like what is happening and you just want to know what's going to happen. Now I'm going to talk about the ending and what I didn't like about it. So it's a spoiler. So if you don't want to know, don't watch. Basically, you never find out, which is kind of frustrating as the viewer sometimes. Sometimes it's really cool. And I think 
Looking back on it, it's been a few days since I watched this film, and looking back, I can appreciate the ending more now than I did then. In the moment, I was like, oh my god, what is it? Like, it just ends, and you don't know if it's actually mental illness or something happening. I have to assume that it was schizophrenia because of the way it kind of ended. There's like this big build-up scene that was actually horrifying. His friend decides to trust him and just validate his beliefs and his feelings by going along with it. The one with schizophrenia kind of says, well, you're one of them. And he's like, okay, well, if I'm one of them, tie me up. Ties him up, puts a bag over his head, puts a gag in his mouth, because he's like, I can't hear you and I'm not supposed to look you in the eyes, so I'm gonna do these things. And he's like, okay, he's a little uncomfortable with it because obviously he's being tied up by his friend and he doesn't know what's wrong with his friend. But that's a pretty good friend to go along with it like that. I think that is pretty cool. So when the time hits that the event is supposed to happen. The war is going to break out. He knows that it's because of the three claps of thunder. So there's a thunderstorm coming in. So he knows that now is the time for the war. And then there's this big, I think it's a hallucination. See, that's the thing is with this movie, you don't really know if it was real or not. I kind of have to assume that it wasn't and that it was his mental illness, but he has this big hallucination and it was so creepy. The cool thing is you never really see what it is he sees per se, you hear flies buzzing a lot and the person will be facing away from him and it's like this big tension moment and you're like, oh my God, are we gonna see the face? Like, what is it? It's really creepy, suspenseful and they didn't even need like special effects for this film to build that atmosphere and to make it horrifying. So after the time passes, he's about to pour acid on his friend because that is what he was told killed them. He's about to do it because in his vision, like in his mind, his friend is turning into one of the creature things, so I don't know what it is. So he's about to pour it and then he stops himself and then it kind of diminishes, his hallucination goes away and he decides to take the bag off of his friend and that's a really suspenseful moment because you think it's going to be like something disturbing but when he pulls it off it's just his friend's face. But like he just feels so he looks so relieved like it's not a thing and it's past and like we can move on now and that's where it ends. Like it ends where he doesn't kill his friend. I think they hug and it just ends there and you're like, oh my god, what happened? So it's so open-ended that it could be real maybe, I don't know, or it could just be schizophrenia. I don't really know but I loved that about it. I loved the open-endedness even though in the moment I was frustrated and I was like, oh my god, what? happened and plus you want to see it like just as humans we're curious and we like want to see what's disturbing under there overall this was a fantastic movie i really really loved it and my boyfriend loved it too like we were just obsessed with this and so entertaining and weird and accurate and realistic so i love these kind of indie like psychological thriller films. They're just one of my favorites. So if you have any other recommendations for something in that genre, please leave it down below because I would love to watch them and then maybe review them. Let me know your thoughts on They Look Like People down below if you've seen it or go watch it because it's really good. And I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.